So let's talk about the three principles of Redux. It's a necessary understanding before we can actually move on to something like NGRX Store to understand what NGRX Store is built upon and the ideas behind it. So we call these the three principles of Redux. We have a single source of truth, state is read only, and pure functions update the state. So let's take a look at number one, the single source of truth. Now the idea behind this is that we have one state tree inside of our store. Now we don't have multiple areas where state is actually located. For instance, you may have created some kind of service that also acts as some kind of data layer, which holds some kind of application state, and you end up injecting the service across multiple components to access the same state. Now, the idea behind using a store is the state for the entire application lives in a single place. Now, the benefits of using a single store and the single source of truth is that it's predictable. It's a predictable state container and it's easy to maintain. And the way that NGRX store is actually written is using TypeScript, which makes the maintenance and the way that we can actually use and update the store much easier than having different types of state distributed across multiple modules and potentially multiple services. Another key benefit is when it comes to universal apps, which we call SSR, which stands for server-side rendering. Now on the server, we can actually create this initial state object of our store, and we can actually pass the representation of the state tree down from the server on initial load, which means that we don't have to run our application and perhaps make multiple HTTP requests as we can populate the store, which is just a single object on the server. So the whole reflection of the current view, for example, will be fully ready on the client. We also can make use of testing and debugging. There are great developer tools, which you may have heard of the term such as time travel debugging, which we'll come on to as we explore the NGRX side of this course. We'll also be learning about how to test this single store and all the small pieces that make up the actual store. And you may have heard terms such as reducers and actions, which we'll be coming on to later. Now, the second principle of Redux is that state is read only. So the fact that our state is actually read only, which means that we can only access the state. We're not allowed to mutate it. We're not allowed to just access a property and override a property. So the idea that state is read only is that we just derive properties from the state. So you can imagine that we have one giant state tree that represents our application. And let's just assume, for example, that we have a list of to-do items. This list of to-dos may live somewhere down nested inside of our application state. And we want to just derive properties from that state and ship them off to a component where they can, for example, render that collection of to-dos. Now, what happens when we want to change the state is we actually dispatch something called an action. And all this is is just a simple function where we instruct the store to call a function, which will then in turn update the state based on the code that we've provided it. Now, the way that we update the state is we use an immutable update pattern. Now, you may have seen this using things like an array.map, which is a good example of an immutable operation because it will actually return a new array instead of mutating an existing array. We'll also come on to some code examples about the difference between mutable and immutable update patterns. So we'll do that in the next couple of videos. The third example is pure functions update the state. So this is really key because a pure function is so easy to test. It has an input and given the same input, it will always return the same output. Now you can think of this in a very simple sense as something like a function that simply adds two numbers together. We might have a function called sum, which accepts a and b as arguments, and it will just return a plus b. Now this is a very simplistic example of what a pure function actually does. It doesn't mutate properties or access properties outside of that given function. So we'll be learning this in more detail as we continue out through the course. Now a pure function in this sense is actually called a reducer. And a reducer is a pure function which allows us to essentially respond to different actions. So let's just assume that we have our to-do list and we want to add a new to-do. We might actually dispatch an action that says add to-do. Our pure function will actually respond to an action's type. So in this example, our pure function may have some logic inside that deals with adding a to-do in an immutable way. Now, a typical example of how our reducer may respond is it may take the existing state, 
of the to do's array and we can say that we want to add one to it. So the easiest way to do this would be to create a new array and add those old to do's in and we can simply add the new to do at the end or the beginning of the array. Now this is the point where our reducer actually returns the new state. So after we've done a manipulation of our data structure using an immutable update pattern, we can actually say the reducer can finally return this new state. At which point the state is then rebound to the store and any components that are actually subscribed to it will get notified right away with that new data. So let's move on to the next video where we'll talk about Redux's core concepts where we can dive a little bit further into what we'll actually be doing and the pieces that come together to make a store.